My college sorority is different, the suitable vessel. In the beginning, all gods lived on the same planet, the first planet in creation. Its name was lost a long time ago, but it was said to have fountains of honey, and at night you could see every single star and moon on the firmament, like they were almost in front of you. It didn't take long for them to start wars for power, killing each other, and destroying the planet. A lot of gods were lost forever, trapped, or fled, and were never heard of again. Then the rest, noticing they ruined their beautiful house, started dispersing. They found new planets, or created their own, according to their individual level of power. Part of the gods didn't learn their lessons, and started wars time and time again, whenever they found a suitable place to live and create living things. Some settled with flawed planets, but not a single god was immune to considering going to war when they discovered the most perfect piece of land they could find in the entire universe, Eden. For millennia, thousands of deities fought for it. The Eden was not only the most beautiful and bountiful place they had ever seen, but it also made possible that all life forms and plans they desired to create could thrive. It was a center of convergence for cosmic energy, where the prospects were nearly endless. The Eden endured all their fighting without bending or breaking, because it was an unlimited source of mana. During that time, they created different beings according to their own capacity and lived among them, but they never knew peace. One specific god, the one who calls himself god, finally ascended to supreme power in this part of the universe, and he created a city only for humans, where they had everything they could possibly think of in his creation, everything but freedom. According to him, humans are the ultimate beings, as long as their intellect doesn't roam around dangerous places. He planned us to be innocent and mindless, mere company dogs for him to watch. A lot of gods and some of the people didn't accept that, and another bloody battle ensued. The plan of God was to destroy them all, mortals and deities, and start over and over until everyone was obedient. But then, one of his highest and most beloved officers rebelled against him, Lucifer. Unable to annihilate his favorite, God decided to divide the Eden in three. The upper lands he called heaven, and he gave it to his allies to live in, eternally provided with everything their hearts could desire. The middle lands he called the earth, and he gave it to his creation, a place way less generous than the Eden, but where some happiness could still be found. The lower lands he called the underworld, and he locked all his enemies in it. Some of them soon gained control over those lands, doing as they please with the mortal souls that end up there. Eventually, the enemies of God started to come up with plans to reclaim the other two fragments. Their utopia is to recreate the Eden, where a reborn human race will live. The leader of the rebelled people, the traitor of his creation, was condemned to roam the earth eternally and never die, and to have disgrace befall everyone around her wherever she went. The God who calls himself God was never a benevolent entity, but his enemies are the enemies of the earth and the Eden can never be made whole again. How do we know it? Because once, God himself regretted dividing the Eden and tried to undo the division. It's called the food, the biblical deluge, and almost everything disappeared. She knows, she was there. She drowned over 400 times in 40 days. If for nothing else, we should avoid that the gods from the underworld reclaim the earth so her suffering won't be forgotten. That's the tale Red Dragon told me right after rescuing me from the library. You can ask me anything, she said. I think she felt really bad for letting me suffer until she was sure she could kill Devourer. What happened to your right eye? She laughed wholeheartedly. I thought she was a little mad with my audacity, but no. You can ask about divine mysteries and you just want to know what happened to the eye of a half-human? I nodded. Well, I believe my power comes from my dad but I never met him. My mother was in a tough place, bad addiction. She tried taking me to the circus, the girl who could spit fire, a big hit, but I hated it. When she died, I lost all reason to stay. She injected all my money. I was homeless, lost my eye on a street fight. Nothing glamorous, sorry. Her voice was almost monotone when she spoke about herself, 
like her history wasn't worth the effort. Wow, it's a sad story, but it makes me respect you even more. How did you end up at the uni? I met Multiplier at the soup. Back when her friend was still alive, she was way more active on charity. She sighed. I owe her everything. I'm nothing but a loyal weapon to the Psy, and I'd gladly die to pay them back. She saved me, and gave me meaning. She repeated the same thing a few days later, when Master convoked a reunion to talk about the Elder's sister. You might have to, Master replied. She was in a bad mood since the incident at the library. For those of you who weren't here four years ago, I'll quickly explain how it goes. The Elder Sister is a powerful entity that can be invoked to fight on our side when things get really ugly and messy. She is a last resort because she's unstable and nearly mindless. It all depends on the vessel. What is a vessel? Jenny asked. For this ritual, it's a Psy Sister. The last times we used Devourer, but after Twins' death, we lost her loyalty, so we'll need to try a new one. The vessel remains alive after everything. Unless, of course, the elder sister is killed in battle. But her mental health will never be the same. But that's not all. Three other sisters have to give their blood and bones. What is requested to be a vessel? Flo asked. The atmosphere was clearly tense. Bastet got up from its usual spot in the middle of the circle and started cuddling with every sister. You have to have a body stronger than average. The elder sister? She's not a pleasant entity, everyone. I want to make it very clear that we're not some good witches making offerings to Mother Nature. I'd rather not label our actions good or evil, because we do what we gotta do to survive. There are only two sides, us and Cert. It's not because he's evil that we're saints. Unless Jen, of course, who is literally a saint. We all laughed at the very welcoming unwinding. The elder sister poisons not only your mind, but your body, Multiplier explained. Devourer was deeply troublesome, but I never saw anyone with her fortitude. Her mind was pretty strong not to shatter too. She has always been twisted, so she didn't change that much after that. Of course, the sturdiest one is me, Red Dragon stated. It was clear that she didn't mean to brag. It was just a fact. I can't afford to not have the girl that fucking spits fire in battle, shithead, Master replied. So, is it literal poison? Kathy asked. Yes, you'll understand when you see her, Master replied. Good, then it's a no-brainer, Kathy replied with a bright smile. I'm the most suitable candidate. No, I was born for this. Thanks to my good-for-nothing mother, I'm immune to all kinds of venom.